Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Hayden Rees Jones. I'm the Policy and Development Officer for the North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership. And I would just like to uh, welcome you to the uh, February Masterclass, which is all about the uh, drink drive, uh, drink drug hub, not the drink driving hub, the drink drug hub, my apologies. Um, just so that everybody is uh, aware, uh, just be aware of your environmental noise. Uh, obviously, if you uh, wouldn't mind, please muting all of your mics. That would be uh, brilliant. Uh, this session is being recorded. Um, so uh, just be aware of that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to just add those uh, into the uh, chat. Um, other than that, uh, obviously, people uh, always ask other uh, masterclasses recorded in slides yeah we are, we do record them um, everything's available um, in a day or two from uh, the link that you see there but also uh, you can uh, also see all of our previous masterclasses which are available on our YouTube channel for uh, want of trying to sound like a, a, a big YouTuber please like and subscribe the videos just to make sure that they get recommended to other people with similar interests um, and you'll also get notifications if you click the bell icon uh, afterwards to um, get people uh, get notifications of when we upload the next one. Other than that, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Matt B, who's a specialist training facilitator for North Yorkshire Horizons, to talk about the uh, drink drug hub. Over to you, Matt. Brilliant. Thanks, Hayden. Yes, so I'm Matt. Um... I'm the specialist training facilitator at North Yorkshire Horizons. Uh, we've developed the Drink Drug Hub and hopefully I'll be able to share a presentation with you, um, <clears throat> which is all about this new resource we've commissioned. So hopefully that's on the screen. Is that OK? Hey, can you give us a thumbs up if that's actually presenting OK? Is that, yeah, have you got it? Perfect, OK. So this is Drink Drug Hub. It's a new resource we've developed at North Yorkshire Horizons. So obviously, if anyone who doesn't know, North Yorkshire Horizons is a service commission to provide drug and alcohol support for people across North Yorkshire over, over the age of 18. And we've got a partner uh, organisation called NY Rise who deliver the support for under 18. Bring it and also um, alongside this website with all the resources. Um, we've created training to go with it as well. Uh, and a lot of my role is in creating and delivering that training. So today I'll, I'll give you an introduction to the resource. Um, it's going to launch hopefully in about a month's time. We'll show you how you can use it and how it can be used to work with young people. And also uh, I've taken some of the training that we will be delivering and some of the slides from that incorporate that in today to have a look at young people and how they're introduced to drugs and the information they use at the moment um, to make decisions about drug use. Um, so. We did a lot of consultation in developing this resource and also about the challenge that we were faced with in terms of how do people connect with young people and how do you talk to them about drugs um, and we found that there's a, a big barrier and generally it's one of perception so how people perceive drugs um, how young people perceive drugs and maybe how professionals perceive drugs doesn't really match in terms of trying to establish communication around that and this can be a conflict in terms of their views on drugs the ideas about risks and also the sources of information. So we did a lot of work which we'll come to in terms of talking to young people about where do you get your information from about drugs and how do you decide what to take and how to take it. And also we've talked to professionals and said what's your understanding from drugs come from and quite often you'll find is they've internalized a lot of the messages that they've been given as they were growing up about drugs uh, which can be a barrier in terms of trying to talk about that with young people. The image you can see on the left here um, of the young girl with hair and screws you up is actually taken from a big campaign from the 1980s in the UK aimed at young people using lots of scare tactics to try and stop them using heroin. The research done after that showed that it didn't, didn't work very well in terms of trying to deter use. Um, but obviously a lot of professionals today grew up having received that message and this can kind of filter through to their practice. Um, so to begin with, it's probably worth having a look at some of the facts around young people and how they use drugs and how they get into this so that we can appreciate that a bit more fully if we're trying to talk to them. And I say this is actually part of a training package which we'll be launching later in the year. So in terms of when they start using drugs, um, this is a, a study that was done by University College London. Um, it's actually done with different cohorts of young people and this uh, particular cohort, they were born around the millennium. 
they followed them as they were growing up and interviewed them every year. And one of the things they talked to them about is their drug use. And what they found is between the ages of 14 and 17 was really quite critical in terms of when they were going to start using drugs. At the age of 14, just over 5% were using cannabis. And when they came back and spoke to them at the age of 17, this had gone up to almost a third. And if you look at the hard drugs as well, um, there were about 1% using hard drugs like cocaine and ketamine at the age of 14. And this had magnified by a factor of 10 by the age of 17. So you can see from this, most young people don't actually use drugs. Um, but if they are going to start using, it's going to start in the early teenage years. In reality, what we know is really it'd be good to be able to try and connect with young people before they even reach their teenage years. Um, the focus at the moment is trying to, to, to get to this age group and then we'll try and work from there. We also took a look at drinking as part of this. And with alcohol use, that starts even earlier. Um, so at the age of 11, just over uh, about 11 or 12 percent uh, were using or had, had had a drink of alcohol. So this is more than a sip. This is consuming a whole drink. And at the age of 15, this had crept up to about two thirds. The interesting thing around alcohol as well was that it was most often actually parents introducing their children to alcohol and um, drinking this within the household with parents. So the parents were both supply of the information and a supply of the alcohol. Um, they, the way we manage alcohol is quite different to the, the way we get introduced to drugs. And so some other studies that we've used as well in trying to inform our practice and our resource. Um, this is from a survey published by NHS Digital, again, 11 to 15 year olds. Um, what they found is drug use in young people had been falling, but it's now rising in the last couple of years, it started rising again. About a quarter of 15 year olds have tried an illegal drug, mostly this will be cannabis, and about half of 15 year olds have been offered an illegal drug. The most common drugs they're offered are actually listed on the right there. So again, cannabis is predominantly the drug of choice uh, by quite a large percentage, but then there's volatile substances, things like aerosols, lighter fluid. The really surprising thing when I started putting this together was that cocaine kept coming up and it, it, it's less surprising now because I've come across it so often in this research and in colleges when we've talked to people. But, but cocaine is the third most common drug being offered, then nitrous oxide and then new psychoactive substances. There are a couple of other things that were quite interesting around this report as well. Um, traditionally, boys were more typically going to use drugs than girls, but that seems to have changed now and there isn't really a major difference between the two genders. Boys are slightly more likely to use class A drugs over girls. Um, of the people who were using drugs, um, about two thirds of them were sticking to just one drug rather than mixing them. And that one drug was likely to be cannabis or a volatile substance. And the other interesting thing was the age at which they started using drugs um, also was um, correlated to the drugs that they would choose to use. So oh. the very the very young drug users um, at the age of 11, if they're going to start using drugs, were likely to start with a volatile substance. So something like aerosols or deodorants, things that they can get access to. At the age of 15, if they haven't started using those and then start drug use, it's likely that they'll start with cannabis. Um, another interesting thing that came out from this research was how often young people would use drugs. So drug use is likely to be occasional. And by occasion, we need monthly or less than monthly. But there was an exception on class A drugs. So students who were using class A drugs like cocaine were actually more likely to be using them regularly, so weekly or more frequently. And this starts to tell us a story about how young people go on their journeys with drugs and that it is different for different young people. Predominantly, young people aren't going to touch drugs, but if they do, um, it's likely to be what we'd call recreational use, even though we're not meant to use the term recreational. It's meant it's likely to be experimental and it's likely actually something they'll grow out of. But in amongst those young people will be a smaller number, a smaller cohort of young people who are using for quite different reasons. It's not for pleasure, it's for self-medication, it's for coping. And these young people we would be really worried about in terms of where that might that journey might lead them. So in terms of the generic risks of drug use, We've done some consultation around that as well. Again, talking a lot to uh, professionals, working with young people in terms of what they believe are the fundamental risks around drugs. And predominantly the answer came back again, that the biggest concern was one of addiction. And addiction is a concern, <laughs> but it might not be the full story around drugs. And this is one of the things that we'll try and develop into our training. So we've asked people about how addictive they think drugs are and then looked at some of the evidence around that. So in terms of cannabis, for instance, it's about one in 10 people who use cannabis 
will form a dependent habit on that on that drug. With alcohol, it's similar. It's been between one to one point five people. But perhaps the most surprising thing is around something like heroin. The stats are actually about four in ten people will become dependent on heroin. Six in ten people using heroin don't become dependent on it. In fact, the pathway through a lot of drug use is there's experimental phases in your teenage years, and you may start to use it socially uh, in your later teenage years and so and, and early twenties. But the majority of people will actually grow out of a, out of their drug use. It's just these little characters you can see in red who then get embroiled in it, and for them they get really poor outcomes. Interestingly, uh, tobacco was actually one of the leading um, drugs that we looked at in terms of habit forming and dependency. So our discussions around drugs need to be, they need to be multidimensional and not just about addiction, because most young people know that actually their peers use drugs and aren't getting addicted and their older peers aren't getting addicted. So we have to have more sophisticated conversations with them about this. Uh, most of them are going to stop using drugs when they get older, if they can avoid being seriously harmed in the meantime. The problem is, is that some young people don't avoid that serious harm. And the young people you can see on the screen here are all young people who sadly lost their lives through drug use. Um, this is actually taken from a news article about the lady, the young girl in the bottom right called Louise, who died after taking ketamine. She died after taking ketamine and then getting into a bath and, and she drowned in the bath. And this is one of the tragedies <coughs> because none of these young people died through addiction from reading the news stories, but through misadventure and not ne necessarily appreciating exactly what they were doing when they were taking drugs. And that's because drugs come with so many other different risks beside addiction. So things like criminal records, physical injury from the drug itself, um, physical injury from administering the drug. So the harm that can come to your body as you inject it or snort it. The physical injury that might happen after when you're under the influence of the drug. So, for instance, falling over if you just take as some nitrous. We've got bloodborne viruses. We've got risk to brain development. <laughs> we know that the younger someone starts taking drugs, the higher the risk of them developing emotional problems and mental health problems later in life. We've got risks around sex. We've got risks around overdose and contaminated drugs. And people taking very pure drugs is actually a risk as well. And then we've got the world of gangs and drug debts and exploitation and county lines. So there's a whole load of different risks that we need to talk to young people about. Perhaps the biggest risk is that they're not necessarily using reliable information to make informed choices about their drug use. And again, their drug use can start at quite a young age. So we really need to be mindful about what information they're being given to help them make these decisions. And it's not to say the information isn't available. It's just to say it might not be deliver to them in a, in, a, in a way that they find useful in order to help them make choices. So with that in mind, I want to sort of have a talk through today about nitrous and give you some information around that. And then we can compare that to the information young people do use around nitrous. Nitrous is big in the news at the moment. We're probably moving towards banning it in the UK. It's not currently illegal if you're over the age of 16. And we'll go into the reasons for that in a second. So in terms of nitrous, it's um, a gas that will leave you feeling dizzy, relaxed, disorientated, very briefly like being quite drunk. And it will last a couple of minutes before wearing off. Um, it's actually this gas in there if you uh, used in childbirth, that's what nitrous is. And it's also used in dentistry. Uh, the reason you can buy it legally within the UK is because it's used within the catering industry. And you'll actually find these canisters in, in cans of squirty cream used to aerate the cream. I've screenshot some things here, um, images here off um, Amazon where you can buy um, nitrous oxide. Um, there's uh, those little canisters, the little whippets we call them, that silver kind of um, always looks like a bullet to me. Um, that, can, that contains eight grams, but you can also buy them with 640 grams or two kilos. And we know increasingly this is something that young people are doing. Um, the advice is not to try and inhale it directly from the canister itself because it will be freezing cold and you can get frostbite. So the better practice is to in inflate a balloon with the gas and then inhale it from the balloon so you more easily regulate the flow. In terms of risk, it is actually uh, it can actually be very risky. It's a kind of a yes no answer in terms of risk. It's not as risky as many other drugs, uh, but if you use it um, in a binge, if you binge on it for many days at a time, and it becomes habit forming, then you can do serious damage to your nervous system, which is what happened to the uh, lady you can see on the screen here. Her big 
story why it was in the press a lot where she was trying to tell other young people actually I didn't know this when I was taking this drug I didn't know it would do this to me so this information she was saying I, I didn't have available so that gives us this kind of query here in terms of well where do young people learn about nitrous oxide who's given them this information and handily this was actually researched a little bit and we did our own research by going to colleges um, and asking them, asking the students about where they get their information from about drugs. So again, these were older students. Um, it gets quite complex as trying to do outreach to very young um, students. So these were aged 16 to 18. And we asked them, who do they trust to speak to about drugs? So we, we, we spoke to four different classes and we had similar answers from all of them. And actually many of them said they would talk to their parents about drugs, which was consistent with some wider research on this issue. And they did say a lot of them that they would talk to tutors and college staff. However, they did identify some barriers, particularly in talking to tutors and college staff. Some said it was too personal. Some were worried that they might tell their parents and some worried they might tell the police or a drug service. So we asked them, well, if you don't feel like you can talk to um, your college staff or you feel there's barriers there, do you look for information online about drugs? And they said yes, and the most common places they went was Google and YouTube. And also uh, we had a whole list of websites for them to tick. And the most common one after that was they ticked other and then wrote Reddit as the social media platform that they use. And this is quite significant, particularly I know we're looking at older students here, but younger pupils as well have um, access to these sites. And, and we know that they also visit these, um, these sites. So in terms of <laughs> Reddit, we were quite interested that they identified that because there was actually a study done into how information about nitrous oxide is exchanged on Reddit. So Reddit is a social media platform. It, it's targeted at a younger audience. Most users are aged um, below 35 and, and many below 18. Uh, it's most commonly used in the US, but it's also the next biggest country where it's popular is the UK. And the researchers who had to look at this um, study, they studied a subreddit um, set up in 2012 about nitrous so that's a kind of a discussion chat room about nitrous and over five months they looked at 655 different threads or um, discussions and over 6,000 comments in total and what they were doing was analysing how do people share information about nitrous to learn how to take it. Some examples of the questions that you'll find on Reddit um, and actually we've looked at lots of other social media channels as well and you'll see similar questions on others uh, not just about nitrous about drugs in general a common question is people going on there to ask how much of this should i use you know the drugs don't come with a dosage on them uh, so people generally ask around and more experienced users for advice so this is the response <laughs> that this user got from that question they're being advised that actually they use 200 to 300 charges which i take it to mean of, the, of those whippets and that's over five or six hours and they don't really have a break so their advice is to start with 10. Um, the concern here is the normalisation of a really high use of nitrous and that high use of nitrous could come with a, a, a lot of harm. The other question that's quite common is people asking about inhalation techniques and again you'll find this wherever drugs are discussed on social media. What they're looking for is how do I maximise the, uh, the effect of this drug and we won't go through all the responses here but they're looking at breathing techniques and basically advice from the more experienced drug user here is to um, completely purge your lungs of air and then inhale as much nitrous as you can so you'll maximize the amount of nitrous this will give you a bigger high but also it carries the risk that you're more likely to pass out and i say not many people die from nitrous i did training not so long ago the advice i had there was about five people a year die it generally comes because they fall over and have an accident and fall in or onto something that is it's then quite lethal. So this is the concern with this technique that they're advising. And finally, people also commonly ask, well, how do I enhance this by combining it with other drugs or in another setting? And again, a more experienced user here is advocating in quite colourful language to combine nitrous with LSD or ecstasy. Again, this is quite high risk stuff to be doing. Um, and often on these forums, what you'll find is the advice is kind of directing people into more high risk use because what they're trying to do is maximise the effects. It's not to say there isn't harm, in a, harm reduction advice on there because here's someone saying, look, using it every day is dangerous and they talk about vitamin B12 deficiency. So there is some <laughs> good advice on these forums, but it's mixed in amongst lots of other advice that actually is increasing risk. We also went to YouTube because people 
Um, young people have identified they go to YouTube and that's where they get information about drugs. And this is uh, an influencer called Nate420. He's actually uses YouTube to try and post um, content about his music. I think he's, he's a budding musician, but he's found a bit of a side hustle by posting lots of content about weed. And again, I think it's fair to expect that younger or younger audience members may well be logging on to see this. Um, <laughs> so his first video here is about 10 ways to get high on weed. Now he's American. It's legal for him to be posting this potentially in America because over half uh, in over half American states now weed is legal um, to consume and buy. But he's also got some other videos on here. This is called Car Hot Box with my mum. It's where he locks himself in his car with his mum and they smoke as much weed as they can. Here he's trying to smoke weed for 24 hours. And this is another hot box challenge, and this is with his friends. So the three of them get in the car, they each put in $10,000, and then they stay in the car for as long as they can smoking weed. And you can see it gets all fogged up. And the challenge is to try and stay in the car, and the last one in the car gets to keep the money. Again, you know, really, really high risk stuff to be doing. And then he's got tips on how to smoke weed. So so what you're looking at here is someone who's effectively providing guidance and advice to our younger people about how to start smoking weed. <laughs> and it's a concern, it's a particular concern if you look at the views he gets. Now the website we're building, we would be really happy if we can get 50 to 100 visitors a day, we'd be delighted with that. This guy on his videos, if you look, he's getting up to 2 million views. So there's a lot more com people consuming this information than it may be more legitimate sources um, <laughs> of us posting information. Speaking of which, young people have also said they go to Google a lot um, to try and find information about drugs. And if you type drugs into Google, so you do something similar, what you'll find is there's absolutely loads of websites out there and, and, and a lot of them are very legitimate. So this isn't about um, lone drug users posting their own information and own videos. This is about official organisations with official websites and Google will often take you to these, which is a little bit more reassuring. The problem for us is that when we were tasked with building a harm reduction resource, so a, a website full of drug information and information about drink, <coughs> our worry was we would just end up with a website in amongst everyone else's website. And it would kind of add to the problem because it would be really hard to navigate around. And the more we explored this, the more we found that actually navigating amongst official sources of information is really quite difficult. And sometimes the advice can be inconsistent and sometimes it's repeated and actually sometimes it's outdated because people don't necessarily keep the website up to date. And the final thing is in terms of the younger audience, it's really important to try and have credibility for them to actually come and visit your site. That was something um, written about by Harry Sumner, a professor at Liverpool St John Moore University. Um, he makes the point that young people often are, are put off anything that looks governmental or official as a new as a as an information source they 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 distrust it and they much prefer to go to the peers to actually get their information so when we were designing our website we were really careful about trying to make sure it didn't have that kind of um feel to it and it looked more mainstream and as i sh I'll, I'll show you some screenshots of it in a moment that's very much what we've tried to do the other thing we thought we would do is instead of creating a website in amongst everyone else's is perhaps make a website <laughs> whose function is to um, quality assure everyone else's websites. So in other words, our website would check everyone else's and then select the resources that were most reliable, up to date, responsible, interesting, easy to digest or the best example of that drug information. I've portrayed this here as if our website will do this automatically, but it doesn't. There's actually a team of three of us who manually go through all these websites and do all the checks so there's a big quality assurance process we have to go through including contacting the websites to discuss this with them uh, before we signpost anyone to their resources and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment now in terms of the actual website this is a screenshot from it let's say it's in development at the moment we're hoping to launch it in about a month it's called drink drug hub and we have the headline here about everyone having a right to the right information about drink and drugs what we're not saying is everyone has the right to take drugs <clears throat> only if someone is going to choose to take drugs then they have the right to be given the correct information to help them make uh, better choices about avoiding harm the home page is also split into different categories 
So it's for different audience members. Again, our remit was to try and really connect with quite a wide audience. So adult users can log on <laughs> looking for information for themselves. Young people have their own section. Friends and family of young people or older users also have a section, so do professionals. And if you click on that tab, it, the website will then take you to the most relevant sources. And again, in how we signpost, we've spent a lot of time trying to think through how we can do that in an attractive way that will engage a younger audience. So this is what that page looks like. And if we've got a chance, I'll, I'll take you to the development site at the end of today's session. So in the young people section, every resource we link to, we try and find a, an eye catching photo, a headline and a little bit of a blurb about what they're looking at. And then at the bottom, you can see the link saying that you're going to go to this website if you click here. So here we've got <laughs> for young people, a link for them to report crime anonymously, a link about parent drinking and who can help them. Uh, the third one here is a video of a young person describing their life as a drug user and the drugs they've used and their advice about maybe trying to uh, do that more safely. The fourth one is important about not coming up. It's about a drug not taking the effect when you take it. Sometimes when people take a drug, it won't seem to have an effect, so they'll redose themselves and take more. And that can be really quite lethal and has led to the deaths of some young people. So this is a video given advice about actually how to manage that situation so you don't overdose. Then there's advice about your risk of getting addicted and also about how to say no if you feel pressured uh, into taking drugs. Again, as you can see, <laughs> all these link to different websites. And um, on the next page, um, I'll show you a little bit more about how we do with our quality assurance process. In terms of this, this is the page for professionals. Um, we've got lots of different resources here. I won't go through them all. Some of them take you through to um, NYSCP, so local resources. Um, if you look at the second one in about Sesame Street, this is one that's currently being checked by children's workers for us. In Sesame Street, they have a character whose mother is addicted um, and goes to a rehab. And there's a lot of resources there around that character um, about how to explain addiction to young people in particular when their parents are struggling. So we've got a lot of resources there that we've sent off to uh, North Yorkshire Children's Services to have a look at for us. And if they recommend that these are worth having, then we'll keep it on the website as part of our quality assurance controls. And you'll also have a look here to see there's guidance on uh, what young people look for in a professional helping them. And also the language that, that we would recommend using around um, discussing drugs. Uh, some of the language, things like uh, saying someone's clean of drugs um, isn't best practice now. So it's just trying to give the latest guidance on that. Um, and then guidance and operation choice and also the jargon buster is quite useful in terms of understanding drug jargon and drug emojis you might find on someone's phone. Um, in terms of understanding why we trust a source, we do evidence that as well. So if people click on that, it will take them to this part of the site. And it will run through all the sources that we've used so you can see who they are and why we think they're a valid source of information. And also it's a link to their home page so you can go to their website and start exploring that in a bit more detail. A bit in terms of how we develop it, I'll only quickly cover this. We haven't developed it alone. We've developed it alongside all the agencies you can see down the left hand side there. And they've been involved from the beginning in terms of planning the site, naming the site, designing it and testing it. And when it came to testing the site, we've been out and actually um, uh, provided um, the site to young people in particular. We had a youth service come and do this. Um, uh, they went to McDonald's and went to uh, young people in McDonald's with a tablet with a website on and they had a browse on it and we asked them for their feedback in terms of the credibility, usability and the impact of the site. So again, we really tried to develop the design on the basis of their feedback to make it something that they actually felt would be useful for them. The final part of the site involves training and events. So as I said, <laughs> sorry, as I said um, some of the slides used today have been taken from some of the training we will have um, available later in the year. And anyone within the region uh, within North Yorkshire can book on to attend one of our events. If they click on there, it will take them to this page here. And this is currently being built. So the text is all just holding text at the moment. But the way it will be displayed is you will click to say, I'm interested in training for yourself or if for young people or for friends and family members. And then the site will show you the relevant courses we have available at, the t at this present time. We'll also advertise other people's resources as well. 
So we'll advertise uh, training by adult safeguarding and also children's safeguarding relevant to drink and drugs with a link to go and visit their website. When we're actually developing our training again, we uh, take it out and we test have test audiences. So this is some of the feedback we've had about the uh, training in particular about young people and drug use from a local college. And again, <laughs> sorry, I've got a bad cough at the moment. We take their feedback to help us sort of refine that training further before it goes live. So we've got two or three courses going through that process at the moment. When we launch, we'll have two um, one hour sessions, so one hour session about drugs and one hour session about drink. And then we've got some further courses coming after that. So in terms of how you could use Drink Drug Hub, uh, we would like people to feel like they can use it for their own learning. And so there's a lot of professionals that we've spoken to. And one of the biggest barriers they've talked about is I would like to be able to have conversations. I would like to be able to work with people around drugs, but actually I don't feel like I understand the subject well enough. It's quite confusing in terms of the drugs out there and some of the street language about it. So um, we've tried to develop a resource that can be really easily accessed to find the kind of information you might be looking for. Again, our professional section has a lot of resources there for that. Professionals can also attend a training event. And again, uh, we're going to try and advertise that as widely as we can. And we will run events for uh, set periods of time and that will alternate throughout the year. There's also resources on the website that hopefully you can use directly with a young person or their family. Like I said, that Sesame Street resource has lots of worksheets and workbooks and um, doodling exercises and things like that, deliberately aimed at a young uh, audience in particular. And if we get children's services saying that they think that those are good resources, then they'll be available on there along with other resources as well. The other way used for the website is hopefully signposting. So you can sign a young person directly to the site. They might not feel like they can have a discussion directly with the professional who said they have identified I find it hard to talk to a, a professional because I'm worried they might tell someone else. If that's the case, um, hopefully they feel like they'll be able to come and visit the website sort of have a browse around themselves to, to access reliable information. You can also sign a young person to an event. So we will be running events. Um, we'll be running these at colleges, um, schools, hopefully as well. Um, and youth groups. So hopefully we will be able to um, deliver some support directly to young people specifically aimed and appropriate for their age group. And you can also sign a young person to support. So there's pathways to support through our website as well. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll show you that. You click on support and it will take you to the support services so you can make a referral. So our launch date at the moment <laughs> is the 27th of February. Um, it may move backwards a little bit. It's moved a fair bit already. Um, once that's finalised, we'll be starting to release uh, further information about it. And um, as I say, there's a link though, which hopefully if I'll just check in with Hayden, I might have a chance to show you the website in a bit more detail. And then I'll be able to take questions. And also, if you're interested in the references used today for some of the studies, we can send those as well. So I'd, Yeah, um, and, uh, Matt. So. so all right, can we have a quick look around it? Yes, yeah, certainly. Perfect. OK, so uh, bear with me. So this is the website. I'll just go back to the home screen. When it goes live, it will be at drinkdrughub.co.uk. It's a bit slow on loading here because this is just a development site, so it's currently being constructed. So here's your headline and then these are the categories down here that you would go on. So in particular, obviously, if we look at young people today, a lot of our resources are, are aimed at um, maybe 15 or 16 <laughs> years older. But in consultation, we have spoken to some younger people as well, and they've said actually they feel that they would feel comfortable with a lot of um, the resources we've used as well. Um, so you can search for a resource in particular using the search tab there, and you can filter down here as well. Um, including by medium. So you might say, well, I just I know that my young person I work with is only interested in videos and we actually know from feedback mostly they are interested in videos. So you can say I just want to see videos. Um, I just want to see um, tools. So things that people can add data and it will give them some information about uh, their drug use. So there can be some assessment tools on here as well. Um, some of the things that um, we've also included on there aren't necessarily directly about drugs, but related to drugs. So things like um, mental health medication, as Young Minds has some really good guides around there, because obviously if someone is using drugs, a young person uses using drugs in a really problematic way, 
in a in a self-medicating way uh, this might be really relevant for them to have a think about in terms of getting some of the medication that might help them um, we can see the same with um, ADHD and, and, and symptoms and diagnoses like that um, people self-medicating there's some advice about their emotions so if people are using drugs to cope with emotions maybe some work around emotions is worth looking at and then we've got links to um, again some of our older young people who've just learned to drive there's a, a guide there in terms of assessing whether they're safe to drive or not the morning after. Um, we've got our guides to solvents. Again, our younger people in particular, uh, we know they're likely to start with solvents, certainly at the age of 11, um, and some advice around the law as well. Uh, we've got advice around drinking, and what else have we got here? We've got a drug first aid toolkit as well. This is something we're currently going through checks with so this is a really good guide from the mix magazine however there's one piece of advice on there they they talk about mouth to mouth resuscitation but they're not talking about using a mouth shield which really it needs to be on there so we're trying to negotiate with the mix about them updating that resource so that we can use it um and again we've got someone here going for an sti test so again the mix magazine sends one of their young people reporters to go and get an sti test and he does a video report about what happens so there's a lot of resources. Sorry, there's a lot of resources on here that hopefully young people will find interest and engaging. When we've done our consultation with young people, they've identified that generally they can find five or more things that they're interested in viewing. Um, we also have a section for professionals, and when you click on professionals, you can identify whether you're working with young people or adults. And if you go on the young person section, it will then give you a bit more information about. Um, specific resources that we'd aim for professionals so for instance on the other parts of the website we've got a drugs guide which isn't so detailed just give you really basic information but in our professional section we've got really detailed information which you can get at drug science um, <coughs> we've got a video from um, um, an educator explaining why we teach young people about drugs and what we're trying to accomplish by doing that and there's our resources from sesame street there's also lesson plans about harm reduction, how drugs work. So you can download a lesson plan through drug science. Um, and we've got, what else have we got here? We've got some guidance on county lines and cuckooing and the North Yorkshire's process for children missing from home. And again, we will continue to update this as the agencies we work with kind of makes the aware of the resources that they think would be worthwhile having on here. The other thing that people can do is get support. So clicking on this will signpost you to regional support. Over 18, you come to us to North Yorkshire Horizons. And between 10 and 19, you're going to NY Horizon. Again, if you click on visit website, it will take you there to make the referral. If you're working with someone outside, <laughs> sorry, if you work with someone outside of North Yorkshire, clicking here will take you to Frank and you put in the postcode and it will tell you where their local service is uh, to get some support. Um, and the final bit is the training page. So people can book training here. As I say, this page is the last bit we're building and you would click on these to filter it for the most relevant sources for you. And you will have a title, you'll have a description and this would be the booking form. So if you click on the booking form, we may add some more details to this. Like I say, we're just, we're just built, this is the last bit of the site we've got to build. We're hoping that it will pre-populate. So we're gonna change this. Hopefully it will just carry the event forward you're interested in. And then we just need your name, your email address, and potentially a telephone number if your email address doesn't work. Um, we may put some other safeguards in place here to try and help um, assess exactly who's applying for training. And then you'd click submit and then we'd be in touch with you to um, book a date for your training. So that's the website um, and that's the, so it's over to you Hayden I guess and answering any questions or queries we have. Thank you, Matt, for that really informative uh, talk there about the hub. I think that the website is going to look, uh, it looks really great, and I think it'll be a really useful resource, and we'd be happy to help, you know, um, support the uh, launch of that as well, nearer the time, you know, when it's uh, ready. Um, does anybody have any questions? If you do, just put them in the chat. No one's putting anything in there, so... Um, 
just like to thank you uh, in that case, Ed, Matt, for your, uh, your presentation. Just another uh, couple of uh, things before I let everybody go. Um, just want to update you on um, some uh, things for the partnership. So in terms of uh, masterclasses, um, you may or may not have seen that we had um, a Ukrainian as refugees, uh, challenges, vulnerabilities and support presentation uh, by uh, Anastasia uh, uh, Yakova, uh, uh, who is from a charity over in the Ukraine. She talked about the um, trauma and stuff like that that some of the Ukrainian refugees uh, has, you know, have had because of uh, the war uh, and making a way over here uh, and also give you some ideas about where you can go for help as well that's uh, beyond just that that's available in North Yorkshire. So if you're working with anybody who is from the Ukraine, it's well worth a look. Also, upcoming masterclasses uh, next month on the 1st of March, uh, same sort of like time, we have the Sexual Abuse Referral Centre uh, being presented. Uh, so if you can make that one, that would be really good. On the 20th of April, so it's just after the return back from um, the Easter holidays, uh, we've got a presentation from Claire Barrowman uh, looking at the results from the Growing Up in North Yorkshire survey. If you're not sure what that is, it's a very large uh, survey that we do across most schools in uh, North Yorkshire and asking about a range of different issues related to children and young people. Um, and there's a lot of good quality information that comes out of there, uh, really getting to grips with some of the views of young people and things about their health and lifestyle and that sort of thing, which is very valuable information for a lot of partners. We also have on the 5th of May an evening session. This is specifically for early years um, providers and also for child minders. It's not really suitable for schools or anybody else, but if you are in one of those sort of settings then, uh, or you were a child minder, then you can uh, attend that one. More information will be coming out from Helen Smith from North Yorkshire County Council about that. Uh, if you want uh, more information about all of these courses, and any others as well, then just look on our website, which is safeguardingchildren.co.uk, and then the Training North Yorkshire and then Training Courses. Uh, just go to the Professionals tab and uh, when the page opens and select Training, and you go to the same page. Uh, on completion of uh, the Masterclass and any of our courses, it'd be really good if you could go back onto the NYES platform, um, via the um, NYAS link uh, that was sent to you after the session, uh, just to be able to A, get your certificates, but also get the feedback as well. And also you can access all of our uh, masterclasses from our YouTube channel. Um, we are nearly at the target number that we need in order to be able to name this, but we could do with another 15, 17 people subscribing just to push us over that number so we can actually name our channel rather than having it in that gobbledygook of uh, letters that you can see in the address there and also you can see those the same videos um, structured by um, the masterclass session that they're in uh, together with in some cases the slides for those sessions they're available uh, also on our website if you go to professionals and then do learning for professionals you can access that there Unless anybody else has uh, any questions, um, uh, you just log on, uh, sorry, uh, Donna, you just log on to NYES and complete the uh, response, uh, the, the questionnaire, and then you get a certificate at the end of it. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to Matt as well for uh, such a great presentation. And we hope to see you again next month. <laughs>